So it's that time again. We're going to look at a Twitter thread about what communists plan on doing when communism is finally achieved. Now, the, uh, the neat part about this is that it won't ever be achieved. And that's something that literally everyone has known for about 150 years now. But for some reason, there are still some communists who are convinced that the revolution is just just one more death away, just just around the corner. About another million. Yeah, well, no, yeah, just one more famine. And uh, if you want to know more about communism, why would you? But if you do, you can go to lizzies.com and check out our book club on the Communist Manifesto, in which Thomas and I explain in great and pedantic detail why this is total nonsense. Uh, but also we explain what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and in sum, that is a classless, moneyless, stateless society. Not actually the Soviet Union. However, the Soviet Union is what they get every single time, because it turns out that you can't deprive everyone of everything they have to make them theoretically equal without some people needing to be oppressed along that way. And so to do the oppressing, you need a tyrannical totalitarian state. And weirdly, that doesn't just wither away, <laughs> believe it or not. Like totalitarian states don't just disappear once everyone's been put in line and the wrong people have been put up against the wall. Sure. I it's, thought Stalin was just going, well, I've done my job and leave. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's strange how it doesn't. But anyway, let's go to the Twitter thread because I really enjoy these. I mean, periodically, like once every year, basically. You get some leftists on Twitter. It's like, ah, I've just finished reading my idyllic communist fancy. And there are lots of different idyllic communists. She's probably just finished reading Kropotkin or something. But she's like, what will your position be after the after communism is achieved? So, okay, let's let's get into this. Because the replies to this are just gold. People are people are starting to understand. So the next one, right? The first one. I will write books on the, in the mornings, playing football in the afternoon, and drawing in the evening without ever becoming a writer, athlete, or painter. Right, so you're going to be crap at everything. <laughs> that's that's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you go to dinner parties. How are you going to describe yourself? Unemployed, by the sound of it. Like, you're not going to be good enough at any of those to actually well, you, do them. You've got to understand everyone's going to be unemployed, right? So the only things you'll ever do are things you do for fun, which means you're going to be a dilettante. You're going to be crap at everything, right? I love how every one of these has got the response. <laughs> That's exactly it. The, the replies. I mean, you can just scroll down this. It's just, you're going to be in the coal mines. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I thought it'd be a neo-queer video game streamer for the cause. Yeah. What? Dig the effing hole. Uh, <laughs> for the cows. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. You, you uh. have just got no idea. Uh, the next one, of course, I'll be an artist. I'll probably join some kind of artist's union creating music and arts, but doing more manual work if necessary. <laughs> part-time minor, part-time musician. <laughs> to be honest, a lot of manual work is going to be necessary. <laughs> well, let's think Bradley there. If necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if necessary. <laughs> oh, but uh, other ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. Artists oh, aren't necessary. Worse, if they criticise the state and don't provide for it, do manual labour off and you're up against the, or you're up against the wall. Exactly. Uh, the next one, actor and writer, except this time I can actually tell the stories that are important to my community. Uh, comrade, someone replies, you will tell the stories that the Central Committee tells you to tell, or you will be arrested for fomenting counter-revolutionary thought. Another one as well. Pleasant dream, comrade. The state requires you to be a medical tester in the soap factory. You'll be scrubbed for 12 hours a day with lye-rich soap to figure out the safe formula for the people. You you get privilege of being clean. You also get the privilege of having burnt skin. Uh, I, all of these replies. All of these replies. Just the idyllic dreamy oh i'm gonna be a musician and painter no you're not you're getting in the factory the saddest one is at the bottom there your vote shouldn't count that's the same as mine <laughs> oh, how but true that's that so is. true yeah. yeah i really we do need a way of stopping these people from voting like just you know even if it has to be you have to be a property owner or served in the military i don't care anymore on the just plus these side people need to be stopped if it helps i'm actually kind of optimistic because all of these people's votes are going to be wasted Every single one of these votes are going to be for some tiny fringe communist party you've never even heard of. That you know they they the oh, brilliant. So that's the three votes that, that that party gets. So it's all wasted votes. So actually, this is not such the problem as you might think. Anyway, the next one, I'll be a teacher. I will dictate the edu I would dictate the edu edu elementary education system. Illegal to have more than twelve kids in a classroom. Nice dream, comrade. Your proposal is deemed unreasonable by the state. Now you will dig silver for 20 hours a day in an Appalachian diver mine. Uh, silver mine, I'm sure they meant that. Uh, if you don't make the quota, you will be declared a burden to the state and executed for the glory of the Ministry of Finance. Hi, AJ. We, re we reviewed your application for the Director of Education, and due to having over 500,000 applicants, unfortunately, you were not selected for this position. <laughs> Luckily, we did find you another option. You can work at the landfill in Sector 8C. Thanks again for applying. <laughs> like, this is what you're going to get. I love how just, yeah, the majority of people are just yeah. work on communism. Why? Yeah. Why Love. are we dealing with you? 
why are you so deluded? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, you you are a lunatic. You know, get off of Twitter. Stop reading communist literature. The next one's great. It's a real big brain on this one. I'd be an important thinker, creator, innovator, artist, and idea. I could imagine myself teaching refugees JavaScript or developing ways to provide clean drinking water to a billion people and more. And someone's like, sorry, you'll be working in the cement factory. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be an important thinker. What's stopping you from being an important thinker now? Nothing. Nothing at all. You can solve all of those issues right now. You can can do the things. You can get a loan and get them done. Instead, you're sat around. Reading nonsense. There's, I was, I was so tempted to include this, but there's this great quote from Life of Pyrrhus by Plutarch, where like Pyrrhus and his assistant, uh, is just, his assistant's like, right, so what are we doing? He's like, oh, we're invading Italy. Oh, why? Ah, because the Romans think they can beat us. Great, okay, and what are we can do after that? Well, we invade Sicily. Well, great, okay, why? Because they think they can beat us. Well, after that, well, then Africa, then Egypt, then the Middle East, and then we'll have conquered everything. We'll retake Greece and Macedon, and then we'll be kings of the whole world. And he's like, okay, why? He's like, well, haha. Uh-huh. So then we can just sit at our ease and drink all day and have pleasant stories. It's like, you're the king of a country. Why don't you just do that now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's literally these. Like, look, you could do all these things if you wanted. You're just not capable of doing all these things, which incidentally was a problem Pyrrhus had. Uh, anyway, the next one, I'll probably go back to college and get an aerospace engineering and planetary science degree and work in space exploration, which I assume would be likely far more prioritized in a communist society than it is today. Oh, yeah. Com- the- far more prioritized for the record i'm currently in college doing economics i dropped aerospace engineering because my greatest job prospects that there are right now are weapons development that would go 100 percent to further u.s imperialism yeah that's the reason okay well this takes me on blacklist no no (laughs) no 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 no. but look look, the guy (laughs) nice way to say i dropped out because i was too lazy and or stupid to succeed in an engineering program as well yes you know enough daydreaming moon 13 get back to the coal mine uh the next one and this this i love this one so much right look at the name username f u hammer and sickle from someone called at communist c word right healthcare worker. i'm gonna be a healthcare worker <laughs> as much as i love to write my heart is in helping the ailing oh, oh really yeah. really wonderful bedside manner yeah exactly i can't wait you haven't even read about conquest of bread have you <laughs> yeah exactly Post um, the IV. <laughs> And I, my favorite response to this, you can realize your dreams, comrade, while you dig trenches on the front line. Uh, food distribution, because of course, seeing as I'm a, I'm a customer service assistant for food retailer right now, I'd probably work in the food distribution centers that replace shops. That is, until it's automated. So, okay, look, comrade punk, right? You're making yes. up your fantastical communist dream scenario, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to serve food like I do right now. Why? <laughs> Why would you need a communist revolution for that? No, hang on. He's entirely right, and you're not seeing why. Go on. Okay, so in North Korea, they have the public distribution system, which distributes the food. Yeah, of course. And the people in charge of that are unbelievably privileged because they're in charge of the goddamn food. That's a good point. And therefore, you can get anything you needed. You could bribe anything. You can trade anything. But he's Um, talking about the the, the uh, post-tyranny fancy land of communism where everything is perfectly doled out and so no one's hungry everyone has exactly what there is no corruption because there's no money right no one goes without and even then he's like yeah, i'd like to be a food retailer like i am right now it's like so god i, I, I think in the back of his mind he knows when things go wrong that's the person who's gonna eat <laughs> everyone and else is not of course the best reply lol this guy thinks there will be food uh, <laughs> uh the next one what are my special talents Music, mathematics, and teaching are some of my skills. Under communism, those, sk- those skills will be harnessed for the benefit of the collective. The new human will be the ba- built on the basis of the new community existing inside the new international how, society. How much music are we going to eat? I mean, I'm Great sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, how much music are you going to build houses? You mathematically figure out how to plant. Oh, so many people are like, oh, I'm just going to play my guitar. I don't need any more guitar players. That's for damn sure. Well, we need cobalt miners, as that Harold points out. <laughs> Back to the lithium processing plant with you. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it's just coal it's miner, so, coal miner, coal yeah. miner. <laughs> yeah. And the, the next one's great as well. I lost that quote from Paul Pot there. If you could just go back and scroll up a little bit. I want to read from Paul Pot's uh, good words. A teacher, you say, I have a special assignment. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Are uh, you wearing glasses, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The, the, this this next one's great. I'm going to do literally nothing. A local bookish person who fishes a few times a week, teaches loosely organised seminars on history and philosophy, and spends a lot of time hanging out with her lover in the forest. Sorry, what, do you think you're going to be in the Garden of Eden? I mean, they do literally yeah. think they're going to be in the Garden of Eden. But like, imagine, who's going to turn up to that? Why would you? You're going to be on your own. 
But someone's just like, yeah, sorry, you've been chosen to clean the bus terminals in section H29. But uh, also, you can do all of that now. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like, stops you. Sure, you still have to work a job so you can pay the bills for all that, you know, food and electricity you're using. But the rest of the time, you can go to the woods, you can go fishing, you can you can yeah, sit around on, on Twitch. This person's like, I'd like to be a burden on society. Yeah. I'd like to just take and consume and do nothing. But even if this person just moved to like a town in the middle of nowhere and did like a part-time job at a store, I feel like they could do these things. They sure. Wouldn't, they wouldn't live the, the opulence they currently live in a big city. But, but Local bookish person has a part-time job in a bookstore, lives with their partner in a small flat, and then on the weekends and the afternoons, they go off into the woods and do whatever stupid stuff they want to do. Yeah. You'd, totally you'd, feasible. You're going to have to give up your uh, really nice phone and your holidays, though, because you live in the middle of nowhere and in a small town. Maybe, but this problem, person probably doesn't go on many holidays anyway, do they? Uh, I'm talking about like foreign holidays, where they probably yeah, take. Probably don't take that anyway. Anyway, the next one, uh, I will provide critical thinking. In a communist no, utopia. You know you <laughs> I will provide free education for everyone who wishes to learn about humanity's history and how we achieved <laughs> such a successful revolution and to always be critical thinkers and construct one's own knowledge. Teaching is what I wish to do. Well, A, you could be a teacher now, but I really don't want you to be. No, she, she only wants to teach about how she made this Garden of Eden. How did the communist revolution go? Well, I mean, you're going to you're gonna have to figure that out, aren't you? <sighs> but remember, the question itself... I love, the, I love all the Russian flags and the responses, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, local Russians being like, you're a moron. <laughs> you may wish to teach, but instead you will work in the steel foundry for 12 hours a day in unsafe conditions, says a Russian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the question itself is capitalist, you see. Get to the next one, John. This question itself is capitalist because it makes no sense under communism. One is not confined to being their occupation, but is known as beautifully inconsistent, evolving, each day different. My position will be what is needed, and then whatever I feel like when I wake up each morning. I mean, come on. This is also, I hate this. I've heard this so often. Such dreamy nonsense. No, but even in our society, you are not just your job. Like, sure, when you go to a dinner party and people say, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, okay, they want to know what your profession is because sure. you might make contacts or whatnot. But if you're describing yourself, I mean, if you actually think about it, you would say, oh, no, I really enjoy history. Like, you're a history mm -hmm. buff. Nigel Farage could describe himself that way because he mm -hmm. is about World War I or any other things that you do, you know, painting or so forth. Like, you don't actually have to just say your job. Like, you could be well, the more interesting things in your life. But these people... I don't think they have any interesting things in their life. No, of course they don't. They're people on the internet. But men do tend to identify themselves with their jobs. I'm a builder, I'm a miner, I'm, you know, whatever. Sure, but you don't have to. No, and these people are like, in capitalism, you have to. And I hate that rhetoric because it's so yeah. BS. Well, they, they don't have any kind of, any any intellectual life outside of dreaming about what they'll be when the, the glorious utopia is here. Uh, but you can see this is a big wish fulfillment fancy. That's all this is. That's all communism is. It is this weird, like, and the, the sort of mercurial nature of the people who want it. It's like, well, I'll be this, I'll be that, I'll be other. It's like, you're going to be nothing because you're a loser, frankly. You're going to you'll, contribute nothing to you'll anyone. You'll be what you ever. are already. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be exactly what you are already, assuming you're not put against the wall. But uh, there were was, was some really good replies to this. I like this. Uh, landlord. <laughs> 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 uh, based fanboy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the next one is uh, dead, a preferable alternative. Or uh, and this, this was my favorite one, a reactionary from uh, Daily Roman Updates. <laughs> but anyway, that's just I. I know this was like a low effort segment and stuff, but I just love watching them like desperately try and justify themselves. So we're gonna be a loser who does nothing, who contributes nothing, who's in this weird dream world as he gets put against the wall and shot. Does reflect how seriously we should take these people in the political sphere. Yes. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium video, an interview with Madge Tore on uh, Black Guns Matter. If you want to follow what else Harry's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at, at Harry Lotus Eater on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.